This video will discuss the differentiability properties of Lipschitz functions. So as we've seen from earlier examples, it's clear to see that Lipschitz functions are definitely not always differentiable functions. So for example, if we look at the function absolute value x, this is not differentiable. And we can see that, um, we can see that from just looking at the graph of absolute value of x, at the origin we see that the graph has a corner, so it's not looking very flat or affine at the origin. Now, you might think, okay, well, this is a very exceptional case. The Lipschitz function, is, the function absolute value x is clearly differentiable everywhere else. Um, so it turns out that you can still make the set of non-differentiability points um, quite erratic. So, for example, uh, a slightly less easy exercise is to show that if uh, you let c be the four-corner Cantor set in R2, and you look at the function that's the distance function from x to the Cantor set, um, uh, so it's not hard to show that this is Lipschitz and also that it's nowhere differentiable along the Cantor set. And essentially the reason why is that, you know, if you look at, um, if you look at the Cantor set and you look at the distance function, you notice that as you move along a line, the distance to the Cantor set is going to oscillate a lot. So here it gets smaller, here it gets big again, here it gets small, then big, and big again, small, big, etc. All right, so that was at this top scale. Now if we zoom in if we start zooming in at points on the Cantor set, we're going to see just another copy of the Cantor set. And so the distance function is going to look a lot like itself at this scale. And so we can see that as we're zooming in on the Cantor set, the function, the distance function is not looking more and more affine. All right, so, uh, so this leads to the question, how bad can the non-differentiability set of a Lipschitz function be? Okay, well, uh, it turns out you can't come up with a nowhere differentiable Lipschitz function. And in fact, um, the set of nowhere differentiability points or the set of points where a Lipschitz function is not differentiable is just a uh, it's a Lebesgue measure zero set so in fact non-differentiability is a pretty rare event um, so I won't go into the proof of this result it's not too difficult but it's a little bit long to do in a video lecture but I'd like to talk a little bit more about the general problem about classifying uh, the non-differentiability points of a Lipschitz function so a very natural question in this context that has garnered a lot of attention is whether there's a converse to Rademacher's theorem. So that is, uh, given a Lebesgue measure zero set, is there a Lipschitz function that is nowhere differentiable along the measure zero set? So Zaworski first considered this question in the 40s, and he has com completely characterized Lipschitz non-differentiability sets in the real line. So a set E is exactly the set of non-differentiability points for a Lipschitz, for some Lipschitz function, if and only if it's a measure zero union of a G-delta and a G-delta sigma set. So in other words, given such a set E, you can find a Lipschitz function so that it is non-differentiable exactly on E and it's differentiable everywhere else. Now when you consider Lipschitz functions going between higher dimensional Euclidean space, the answer to this question ends up depending on whether your Lipschitz functions are going into a smaller Euclidean space or a larger. So Price and Spate have shown that um, there exists a Lebesgue measure zero set in Rm, so that any Lipschitz function from Rm into a strictly smaller Euclidean space is differentiable at some point in the set E. So this is a universal differentiability set. On the other hand, there's a famous theorem by Alberti, Chorney, and Price, and then improved by Chorney and Jones, that says uh, for any Lebesgue measure zero set of Rm, and any integer n at least m, we can find a Lipschitz function from uh, f from Rm into Rn that is nowhere differentiable along this set. Uh, I should put a question mark by this theorem since this is a result that has been advertised and talked about for a long time. However, it hasn't been written up or published yet. So you should just take this result with a grain of salt. However, all these people are quite clever. So I'd take that with a, maybe just a tiny grain of salt.